and gentlemen, Mr. Jermaine Clement and Mr. Taika Waititi. I've got a little bit of a fever, so I might say some feverish, surreal things. And I'm on uh, children's Tylenol as well, so I might say some immature things. Do you prefer children's Tylenol? I don't, but I have a child and he has some Tylenol, so I borrowed his. Usually I you stay away. You had to take away. it off your kid, man? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I know there's, there was originally a short version of this, and I remember you guys saying something about how it originally came to be, uh, it was inspired by a stand-up act you did. Uh, how, that was quite a while ago, how did this stay in your consciousness that you wanted to make it into a film? How did it stay in our consciousness? Just remembered, just kept, kept it in there. Yeah, if, thing, if um, you know, we talk about big lists of ideas and the ones that keep coming back are the ones that usually have some, some legs. So how different did it end up being from uh, its original incarnations to what we have now? 50%. Uh, we shot this thing in town over a few nights in Wellington. Um, the, the, short, the short thing. The short, That's what yeah. we're talking about. So yeah. we'd, we'd, it was just an experiment, really, to see what it would be like. We interviewed the vampire characters. We, we didn't have um, the werewolf characters yet, things like that. And um, just the parts we liked, we stretched out and or we kept the things that we liked. You know, the characters that we thought would be interesting, we gave them a big, bigger story. Mm. Fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> it's a fascinating story, how we made a kind of a short film and then made a feature. And oh, I don't know. I don't know, but that's the answer. <laughs> I think about 50% found it fascinating. 50% want a new question. Okay. So talk about a uh, little bit about your, each of your characters and how you developed kind of their personalities. They follow these kind of archetypal ideas of vampires. Um, how did you settle into which archetype you wanted, which archetype you wanted to play with, uh, and how you came to love them both? Um, well, Jermaine, I, for, I worked with him a long time, and whenever we're coming up with characters, his, his characters often are involved in orgies. Um, often surrounded by lots of girls and something I like to explore with my characters yeah just with the characters <laughs> right yeah um, my character is sort of I wanted to be like the um, the mother of the of the flat of the share house and um, I just basically just played my mum uh, based it on her uh, one she's, the, she's the only mum I really know well She's the only one you've had, really. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Um, also, girlfriends that have been like mums. They looked after you, very nurturing. Yeah. That's nice. Um, and you made one of your girlfriends into a mum. She's the mum of your daughter. She's my ex-girlfriend, because I married her. <laughs> <laughs> Is, does she know you? I introduce her. This is my ex girlfriend. Ex -girlfriend. <laughs> And wife. And wife. <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, I, I thought of myself as being an older, kind of a, a man who's going senile with age um, and unpredictable. But then the other actor we're working with was quite unpredictable. We're, we're not using scripts. We let everyone improvise around the scenes that we set up. And, um, and so I couldn't do that anymore because he would take that role of the guy, you don't know what he's going to say. So I had to quickly change. Uh, the film, it, it's loose in a sense. It takes the form of a mockumentary. Uh, what, what drew you to that? What drew you to making a, um, a mockumentary about these characters, about these vampires? We wanted to make a documentary, a uh, film that, like a fake documentary. We wanted to make a documentary. You can say mockumentary. It just turned out to be fake. Uh, about something that you we can't, wanted to make you can't a documentary really document. about vampires, but there were no real vampires. <laughs> so we had to fake the entire thing. We wanted to blend naturalism with the supernatural, you might say. Supernaturalism. Yeah, supernaturalism is what we've It's a new genre for. we made. Is that like magical realism? Yeah, a lot but, like but it. But bit bigger. Super, super is a bit, seems better. Less eating chocolate and <laughs> that kind of thing, though. We wanted to blend, you know, just make a, film, a documentary about something you couldn't actually do in real life um, and have effects. 
and make a revolving room so we could do a New Zealand version of Inception. <laughs> like just ride around, roll around on the ceiling and stuff. How much fun if you see that? the movie, you'll see that. How much fun is it to roll around on the ceiling? It, we wasted a whole half a day shooting what ends up being about 20 seconds. It's not wasted. It's, a, it's cinematic gold. <laughs> it was worth it. It took half a day to weave that gold. Um, how much fun is it rolling around in that room? It's very discombobulating. You get very dizzy because... Uh, so you know the idea. It's how like do you hamst- re- recombobulate? You just have to get out and relax, I guess. You, the idea is in, you're in this room and it's like a hamster wheel and it turns round and round and the camera turns with it so the room looks still but you appear to be running up the wall and up the ceiling and things like that. Um, but it's really like being in a tumble dryer and you haven't got any thing to focus on because you think you, know, you might focus on a point like that door handle except you don't know where the door handle's going to be in real space. You just have to feel it and it's... Uh, you end up with a lot of bruises as well. We just tested it out first before we put the actors in and we were covered with bruises. It's a really hard job, what we do. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Might be the hardest one in the world. <laughs> it sounds very physical. Mm. It's, on, it's, pr- it's up there with diamond mining. Mm. I didn't so know those that. Those are the two hardest... Well, your your subjects are vampires. It seems as lethal. Mm. Well, the w- the yes. difference is we're yes. mining for laughter. How's it going? Uh, it's okay here. There's a couple of little little shiny little bits, but nothing big. <laughs> <laughs> no big gems. <laughs> um, the, being the film is kind of loose in its structure, can can audiences expect to see more? Uh, on a More DVD and a special feature. More than, is, than was in the trailer. Well, actually, the structure, the structure is tight for the film, the story structure. So we know what was going to happen in every scene. Just the dialogue, we let people come up with themselves. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of extra footage. We, we um, got about between 120 and 150 hours of footage, and then we had edited it down to 85 or so minutes. You guys have spoken about, uh, you know, they didn't get to see the werewolves kind of in their full glory, but y- you had to put them together in a way. Uh, you used a lot of things left over in different effects shops. Um, what was that like, kind of working on these designs where you did have this limited shoestring? Fortunately, Wellington's full of people making uh, big budget films, and we just go into the... Um, Trash cans. Yeah, <laughs> basically... <laughs> What are you throwing yeah, away? So we went to Richard Taylor. Are you going to use this old werewolf head? Yeah, yeah. we'll just take that. A few ra- fluffy rags. <laughs> and these orc ears look a bit like vampire ears. Um, Let's go to a clip. Okay. Let's run that clip. Very hard hitting and very raw. A lot of it was in the American trailer that played as well. <laughs> yeah. It's a long trailer. Yeah. Uh, there is a rawness to it. I mean, how influenced by Errol Morris were you in making this? Hmm. <laughs> Dumb. Uh, it's weird he didn't wear that bow tie here. Tonight? Yes. That was a it weird is choice. weird that I didn't <laughs> wear that giant bow tie. Thought about it and I thought, well, maybe tomorrow night for the screening. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite piece of costuming? I mean, you guys, you guys get to wear a lot of fun stuff in the film. Costume. Oh, in the uh, there's a a big ball scene in the uh, at the end of the film, and I wear a beautiful purple outfit that yeah I thought was very very cool. I it was made out of curtains. Really? Not many people know that. <laughs> Did really? you know that? Uh, I think uh, I heard something about it. A wardrobe woman made it out of some curtains. But you'd never know unless I was standing in front of a window. Um, and I wore a, a, a fake wolf, wolf fur cape at one point, which was quite a nice item to wear. I'm going to throw fake paint on you for doing that. I'm gonna What's fake, fake I'm paint? i fake spit on your fake wolf What's fur. What's fake spit? It's like an imaginary, invisible. Oh, okay. I'm fine with that. So too many fake wolves are dying for these coats. Hmm. We go into FAO Schwartz and round them up and slaughter them. 
Uh, so how did, how did the characters of these kind of polite werewolves develop? Uh, mm. We thought a lot about them trying to contain their anger like eight incredible hulks. So we wanted them to be um, pushing their emotions down so that they don't flip out and transform. Deep. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's yeah. nice that you guys a think proper about answer. your work. <laughs> Um, look, we should start throwing it to the audience. You guys are here to... to but none of you... Has anyone seen the movie? Oh, some of you downloaded it illegally. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm really excited about this movie because I love like the whole like vampire film genre. And I'm always really excited when decent vampire films come out. Um, so my, kind of, my question is, like, how interested were you in vampire films in general? Or was this just kind of you thought it would be a fun idea and like what kind of vampire archetypes were you interested in playing with for this film? I took you looking one. at you mostly. <laughs> well, I'm in the center. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Yeah, all right. okay. I know it's difficult okay. to see. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. I, I loved vampire movies growing up. I, I accidentally saw one when I woke up when I was about five years old. I saw this movie called Scars of Dracula, which is a very cheesy hammer horror kind of thing. It starts off with a very fake looking bat dripping blood onto a pile of dust and that dust um, reconstituting itself into Christopher Lee as Dracula. And it looks very funny now, but at the time it was the most terrifying thing. I didn't know how someone could have conceived of that. And I had nightmares about it for years. Um, and I would keep watching and seeking out vampire films um, mm, through most of my childhood and, and adolescence. So, yeah, it's, it's stuck in my head a lot. You, Taika? Um, yeah, I just watched a lot of vampire films as a kid. Um, and The Lost Boys, actually, was the one that really affected me. I um, desperately wanted a trench coat like Corey Haim wears in that movie and I asked my mum to get me one and she got me a, I'm pretty sure it was a, a woman's one from a second hand store with a, a giant um, shoulder pad so instead of looking like Corey Haim I looked like Glenn Close. Um, mine kind of goes off of her question a little bit. I was wondering if there were certain horror performances that you guys based your characters on or looked to for inspiration. Uh, yeah, for me, it's kind of, you know, take a bit of this and a bit of that from different characters. Uh, I tried for a, a Bella Lugosi accent with a bit of um, a Gary Oldman and Dracula look, um, but as if the character hadn't been quite as successful as those guys or had, he'd hit hard times. I sort of based mine, um, I get, as I say, on my mum and also C-3PO. Um, <laughs> What about the look? We would also make these... Um, uh, well, I was going for C-3PO um, in a sort of Tom Cruise body. Hmm. A sort of Tom Cruise Brad Pitt hybrid face. Oh, yeah. Um, we, had, we had big kind of look sheets, I guess, that we worked on with our wardrobe designer. So we'd add some vampire characters, like classic... Um, so Deacon, the other main vampire, uh, was the Lost Boys and some band members, Jimi Hendrix, um, people like that. And I had um, Gary Oldman as Dracula as well as Nick Cave, Karl Lagerfeld, um, some real life people as well. And you had... Uh, oh, yeah, who, some, probably some Mr. Darcy character yeah, in the movie. Yeah, Colin Firth was definitely on there. Colin Firth, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what was your experience like working with uh, Tina Fey, Ricky Gervais, and Ty Burrell? And did you ever meet all the Muppets like Kermit the Frog and Ms. Piggy and, all, and Fozzie I Bear? Know, exactly, I want to know what those guys are like, the Muppets. Yeah, the Muppets. Were they polite? They were very polite. But to be honest, in the prison scenes, some of those rats have quite dirty humour. <laughs> and you'd be surprised at the kind of things they said to me. Um, but everyone else, Kermit was a real gentle frog. Uh, Miss Piggy, I didn't get to meet her, unfortunately. Um, Lucky for you. I think she would have been all over you. You think so? <laughs> you think I have something Kermitish 
Is it my skinny arms and belly? And your green. My greenness. That's just because I'm sick at the moment. Um, yeah, well, when, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I, I remember there being rules about what you're allowed to say about the Muppets. Uh, you, you know, you know, break the um, illusion, so I can't remember why. I could tell you privately what they're like. Hi, I was wondering if you can briefly talk about the house. I know you said that you constructed a room, but was most of the set constructed, or did you have a set location? Um, yeah, all the interior of the house was built and uh, constructed. Um, well, every interior of every house is built, um, really. But, but this one was built on a stage. Specifically for us. Yeah, this yeah. one was built for us, for the movie. And it was... Oh, yeah, we can tell them that, eh? Sure. We've been telling everyone. <laughs> we've, been t- we've been telling everyone. We're not allowed to tell anyone. But we're, we're not supposed to tell everyone we this. We can't shut up about it. But the walls, the walls are uh, actually made from old bits of green screen from The Hobbit, which <laughs> shot in Wellington as well. They're good movies. Hobbits and Muppets. <laughs> that would be your ultimate movie. Hobbits and Muppets. Hobbits and Muppets. That would be, oh, I'd like that too. Um, yeah, so uh, if you peel back the wallpaper, it's bright green. Um, and we had a few, we had a few things that we asked our set designer, who worked on The Hobbit and our film, um, which was to leave the ceilings open so that we could fly around on wires if we needed to and... We pre-lit all the rooms so that, because we improvised the entire film, we wanted the ability to just, at any point in the scene, just get up and walk out and go to another room and a camera could follow you in, in there. So it's, it really was more like a documentary. Um, and, yeah. So, yeah, so a lot the of the outside, stuff was found. Yeah, yeah. Like, the outside is a, an existing building. It's Peter yeah. Jackson's office. That's true. We borrowed a lot off Peter Jackson. Hi, um, sorry, this question's also kind of for Jermaine, I'm a big fan. Um, <laughs> you've done such a, feel free to answer too though, if you find yourself. Yeah, you can, talk, you, can answer. You, can talk to, you can talk to people about me if you like, you know a lot about you me. You ask me and I'll okay. see how well I know this guy. Okay. All right, so you've done so many cool things. With no, I don't know about that. In, in comedy. <laughs> not, <laughs> and, not so many, just like. And as a musician, I, I mean, I don't know about you, and as an actor and voice actor and now a writer and director. Um, well, there's too many Do you things. find that there's like a common thread in the characters you play and... Also, um, what is one thing that you haven't done that you'd like to do to add to your repertoire? <laughs> oh, mm, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess I, I started off writing and, uh, with Taika. We, we started... Yeah, I was involved. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and also, um, Brett McKenzie from Flight of the Concords would um, work in a group um, with us. And sometimes... Sometimes separately, Brett and I had our band and Taika and Brett had a um, theatre show that they did without me. That's cool. Everyone was cool with it. Everyone, Everyone was cool, cool with it. Everyone okay. seeing other people. Uh, yeah. um, I, I, I don't really mind. I don't really mind. Uh, I, like, I like to draw, but I'm not that good at it. But I'll, I'll try it. Um, you are really good at drawing, Jermaine. Now, come on. I was just fishing for yeah. that. He's very thank good you. at drawing. I guess I uh, thank you. I think you should work on your writing on your free hand. <laughs> mm. Make it sometimes a bit very hard to understand sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Seeing notes. A bit messy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll work on my making my writing a little bit tidier for people to read is something I'd like to work on next. It's my we, next we can work on that together. I can help you with that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> your, is your writing that tidy though? It's got a style. I but it's actually found that hard I to had to make my writing less legible so you could understand it. Right. Okay. Hi, Taika and Jermaine. How are you doing? Um, good. Good. <laughs> good. Um, my question is actually, or first, I'd like to start by saying I was lucky enough to see the film a while ago, and it was fantastic. Um, what site did you download it on? No, no, no. Uh, I actually saw it at a festival. Okay. And, cool. Thanks. Um, I have to say, you know, it was really memorable, one of those movies that really sticks with you until um, the credits, and then I just really couldn't remember (laughs) any of it. Um, 
But um, my That's question a private joke. Is, uh, you'll understand that when you see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> my question is actually, um, since it was mostly improvised, I'm actually an improviser and a filmmaker as well, I was wondering, um, how did the structure of the film evolve as it went along? How did it change? And was it filmed chronologically? Yeah, it was filmed as chronologically as possible. And we actually had a script. We knew what was happening. We knew what the story was, but we just decided to not show the actors because we wanted the performances to be very real. And, uh, and they're yeah, very real. They are so <laughs> real, real. So realistic. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so the editing took about 14 months. So we were getting through, like, just that was just going through all the material. As we say, it's like 140 hours of footage. The only times that we didn't um, film chronologically is if uh, one of the actors was only available that day or uh, we had a lot of effects, so we had to have extra crew to do the effects. Because otherwise, you've seen it, it's um, just an, us in a house, but sometimes we'll fly and someone will turn into a bat and or someone will burst into flames. And so, um, But yeah, as much as we could, um, just in case anything we came up, with early would affect the story later on or we'd come be able to call back a joke later on. Um, and we did add some stuff, like uh, my character... Um, we we added, we filmed some extra stuff to, to make you know that my character was in a low place because that didn't come across the, in the first edit. Did this, sorry, did That's the right. structure change in the way... Like, I guess, like, some of the characters... There's some things I found in the film that, like, just... There's no way you could predict from like starting it just the way it felt. I mean, maybe that was just the mm. acting, but yeah. it just changed. And I can't help but feel like maybe you added something. You were like, oh, wow, let's go with that. Let's keep that going. Let's make that bigger. Like maybe I guess the example I could think of is like stew. Like I can't think of any reason why, yeah. you know, you would know that from the beginning. We did know that he was going to be. Stu is this character that for those of you who are about to see the film, you're going to really love Stu. He's a really great character. I want to be Stu. Guy. So Stu's basically playing himself. He's my old flatmate. And um, he works not in an IT. Actor. He's not an actor. He works in IT. And he plays Stu, who works in IT. And, um, yeah. So but like, the thing is... He yeah, was we, always a big part of it. We wouldn't have known that, but we had made a short, and we'd put him in the short, and we knew he stood out because he had a different style to everyone else because he wasn't a performer. And when we wrote the script... Uh, based on a lot of the stuff that we um, came up in the short, um, we we made him a really big character. But in the um, in the short, we did it was more like you described, where we would just take a someone make a suggestion and then we'd go and do it. But in the feature, we couldn't do that so much because um, because we had a plan and we had to stick to it and we had limited time and you know we had our um, the shots that we had to get every day. But some of the things that were based on the earlier version were things that we just thought of on the day and improvised in the, in the short version. Well, my question's kind of similar. I just, because it's an all improv, I was wondering how you prepared. Like, do you just sit around and riff each other to try and like get the juices flowing? Or how do you, how did it kind of go? You don't know? <laughs> Well, we did start off... Well, life is a big improvisation, isn't it? You know? we, We're just improvising right now. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to say next. Mm. <laughs> I think that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should have <laughs> rehearsed this, all of us. No, well, we, we did. We have rehearsed we'd done the, the question and the answer thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had done the short, so we had done the characters, most of us. Um, other characters we wrote for the actors so we tried to guess how they would speak and then because they got to choose their own words um, it didn't feel strange and f coming from them and um, sometimes we would just start off really simply so it starts off with uh, Taika's character waking up, waking everyone up and then we have a me meeting, you know, a flat meeting and um, so it start off with really basic stuff nothing too, um, nothing too emotional or anything like that I mean, we're all asking you questions about vampires and your research for horror films. What was your research for documentaries as an inspiration? Um, well, we actually watched a lot of mockumentaries for research. But documentaries, um, I think well, originally like, I was always going on about um, Grey Gardens as like an yeah, observation. piece. Yeah, that's one of your favourite. 
Um, um, I, I watched, well, we watched different things. We didn't um, have all the same influences. So I watched, I got a whole pile of history channel documentaries, which we imitate a little with the, you know, woodcuts and zooming in onto oil paintings and that kind of thing. And um, also another thing, I wanted it to be like um, some kind of monster, the Metallica documentary, <laughs> where uh, you don't know who's going to be the main player in that film. It surprises you who, who, who it's going to be. So we were trying, that's one thing we were trying to do. Hello. I was hoping it was going to be you asking the last question. Well, thank you. I'm right here, ready to ask the question. All right, uh, so you guys have obviously worked together a long time. What I'm wondering is... Because, we, you, have, uh, because we have this... What? Rapport. <laughs> we just know how to... Finish. Each other's... Sentences? Words. Sentences? Yeah. yeah. You've got it. So what I'm wondering... This is a really serious question, I'm sorry. Okay, good, good. Uh, would you compare your relationship as to more like a loving romantic relationship or is it more like a very competitive, look, look like body angry language. sibling kind of at each other's throats relationship? Uh, it's developed and matured as we've um, nice, worked nice. together. The first it's thing become, that was it become less physical? <laughs> <laughs> it's Hard become less physical over time but more understanding. Like a real relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Um, <laughs> it, um, yeah, and now it's just at the point where we can't stand each other's voice, the sound of each other's voice. Oh, and that's you just awful. Wanna, no, that's not true. It's not true at that's all. Not true. Of course it's not true. Uh, when, we, when we first did our first play together, <laughs> he's hanging on my every word. When we first did our f first play together, um, the night before we opened, I thought we were going to punch each other up. I thought it was going to be a big fight. We never got to that. Um, we had to go somewhere and the car broke down and then we had to walk and we had to, we called off, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry too, bro. Yeah, and, man. uh, that's beautiful. Thank you. And then sometimes on stage, uh, when we do plays, uh, we'd improvise insults to each other and sometimes it would get very personal and then start to talk about, you know, what was going on in each other's relationships or things like that while the, while the woman in question was in the audience. And afterwards, yeah, and then afterwards, be like, well, I was so angry at you. Low man. blow, man, yeah, low yeah. blow. But we've gone past that, and now, uh, now we work easier uh, together without that kind of layer to it, For, fortunately. I don't think we probably could have kept going if we, if we were still like that. Thank Fantastic. Talking well, to this. Thank you guys thank you for, for coming. Asking. Thank you, Mr. Jermaine Clement, Mr. Taika Waititi. Thank you. What we do in the shadows opens on Friday. Please tell all your friends and go see it on a giant screen with a giant